Rebecca here with Advanced Screen. In today's video, I wanted to demonstrate the use of Union Plastocharge inks. Plastocharge inks are a plastisol based discharge ink. You can utilize any of your already stocked plastisol ink with a discharge base. Plastocharge is going to be a 50% plastisol ink with a 50% plastocharge base. This is Unit Inks Plastocharge Additive, DSPCH 9070. You do want to mix this very well before use. It does tend to separate. You can use any of your plastisol based ink as long as it's not a low bleed. For Union Ink, we have different opacities available. The Ultra Soft series is going to be more of a softer hand for lighter color garments. The Max Opaque series is a high pigment load and it's going to be the best used for your Plastocharge mix. After we make our Plastocharge mix, we're going to be adding in 6-8% of this Discharge Powder. Discharge Powder is called ZFS Powder, Zinc Formaldehyde Sulfate. When you need to find the value of the gram amount to be able to add into your plastic charge ink, we're going to take the amount of the ink, which is going to be in grams. So say we have 100 grams of ink. We're going to take 100 and we're going to multiply that by 0 0.06 and that'll give us 6 grams. You want to try to do this stuff in a well ventilated area. We do recommend wearing gloves and a mask. The other tool that you're going to need is a gram scale. You can get a gram scale from any of the big name brand uh, stores in your area. If you can, try to find something that's going to weigh out within half a gram. We here at Advanced Screen sell many different types of emulsion. For discharge, we want to try to have more of a sturdier emulsion that's going to be able to withhold against the discharge agent while printing. If you're going to be doing anything under 50 prints, you may be able to get away with the emulsion that you currently use without any kind of hardener. If you use a pure photopolymer emulsion, which is just a single part, you don't add a diazo sensitizer into it, we have something called Chromoset Hardener. Chromoset Hardener is manufactured by Chromaline. It is utilized in the washout area after we've already rinsed out our image area. This product is going to increase the hardness of your screen. It'll make the stencil much more durable so that when we put the plastic charge additive or discharge additive uh, into the ink, it's not going to break down as easily. The emulsion that I'm using on my screen today is going to be Chromaline's Chromatech WR for water resistant. There is a hardener or diazo sensitizer that you can get for this emulsion. I'm only going to be doing a test run, so I'm not going to add any hardener into it. If you're going to be doing long runs, it is highly suggested to be able to put that diazo sensitizer into your emulsion just to have that safety net so when you're on press, your screen doesn't break down. Do keep in mind when you add any type of sensitizer into your emulsion, it does shorten the shelf life. You have about three to six weeks to be able to utilize that emulsion. For pure photopolymer emulsions, we have about 12 to 18 months shelf life. You can keep it in the refrigerator. For utilizing something like Marikami's Photocure Blue, which is a single part pure photopolymer emulsion, you can get a diazo sensitizer for this emulsion. You don't have to add the entire sensitizer into your gallon of emulsion. You can pour it down into a quart size container and we sell the two gram amount of diazo sensitizer for that emulsion so that you can just activate a smaller amount so you're not wasting the entire gallon that you have on hand. Okay, so I'm going to do a quick demonstration on how to mix a plastic charge ink. You do want to make sure that the amount of plastic charge ink that you make is going to be exactly what you want to use. You don't want to make a ton. The ZFS powder or the zinc formaldehyde sulfate once added into the ink does create a pot life and the pot life is only going to be about 12 to 18 hours. Once that time has passed, you are not going to be able to use that ink. So do only mix up what you're going to need for that day. Okay, so I have a gram scale here and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to weigh this container first and we're going to tear out the weight of the container so that it doesn't affect the amount of the ink that we're going to be putting into the container. Make sure that you do set your scale to grams. Sometimes they'll be weighed out in ounces, pounds. Uh, we want to make sure that the unit of measurement is going to be a gram. 
So for the plastic charge additive, we need to mix this really well before we add it into our container. It might have somewhat of a clear state. We want it to be more of like a milky or a cloudy state. Okay, so that's mixed up pretty well. It's pretty cloudy. So I have 200 grams of the plastic charge additive, so I'm gonna add exactly another 200 grams of my stock Plastisol ink. This is Union's Max Opaque Peacock Blue. All right, so we're at 401 grams. So 200 grams of the Plastisol ink plus 200 grams of the Plastic Charge Additive. Now we're gonna mix this up really well. So now that we have our Plastic Charge mixed up, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna select the unit of measurement back to grams, but we still have to weigh out the container. We don't want to utilize the weight of the container when we're putting in discharge agent. So I'm gonna take an empty container, put it on the scale, and I'm gonna tear it out. And that brings our amount back to zero. We'll put the ink and the container back on the scale and we're back at 402. So if we have 400 grams of ink, we've got 200 grams of the Plasti Charge Additive and 200 grams of the Plastisol ink we're gonna take that 400 and we're gonna multiply that by 0 0.06. So a really easy way to do this is take four times six equals 24. So we're gonna add 24 grams of agent into our plastic charge ink. So again, back to our discharge formula, we're gonna take 6% agent and we're gonna add that into our ink. So we're gonna take 24 grams of agent and we're gonna add it into our Plasti Charge ink. So tear out your scale. So we're at 22, 23, 24. But we're gonna mix this up as best as we can. If you have a high powered drill with a paint mixer that would do the job, I'm gonna go ahead and hand mix it. So now that we have our plastic charge mix complete, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna put it on press and we're gonna put it onto a black 100% cotton garment. The reason why we use 100% cotton garments is because the discharge print does come out a lot more vibrant. It works a lot better. This is 100% cotton garment from Next Level. This is a Next Level 6040. So you can see here that the print is a little bit more muted. It didn't discharge out completely. Um, you can utilize these garments still for your discharge printing. Just know that it might not come out as bright and vibrant as you thought. So let's go ahead and we'll put our screen on press. We're gonna be using a 200 mesh. I don't wanna use too high of a mesh count because I don't want the plastic charge to dry out on the screen too quickly. And I don't wanna use too low of a mesh count because we're working with a very uh, thin ink. So I don't want it to fall through the mesh count either. <music>
Thanks for watching and happy printing.